found this one by mistake. So we just hit our first Game of Thrones location here in Antrim. By mistake. By mistake. We actually, this wasn't on our list and it was only that there was a sign that says Game of Thrones. And I was like, hey, that says Game of Thrones, stop. So we turned the car around. So this is actually where, um, after Sansa was taken away from King's Landing by Littlefinger. It was the Runestone Vale of Arryn. So it's where Sansa and Littlefinger sat and they watched uh, Rob and Arryn um, practice at sword fighting. And it was just here. So there's our first Game of Thrones location here in Antrim. Shield up. Attack, my lord. Attack. Don't cross your face. It's quite beautiful. Isn't it? Great view as well. Have a, just look at this. Just look at this. There's not believe you found that. Your blind is a fucking bad head to spot that thing. I've just seen the word Game of Thrones on the well, list. It was tiny. <laughs> Have a good eye, mate. Do you need a home most of it? <laughs> Go, do you want to get off the road or? He has a fucking uh, leash and all on him. <laughs> He's just chilling. So we've just reached our second location and we are in awe. Not uh, not what we expected. Not at all. So we're here at uh, Cushenden Caves in the Glens of Antrim. And what this, or the scene that was filmed here is the scene where... Uh, Melisandre um, gives birth to the shadow creature. The it's the scene where Davos Seaworth brings uh, Melisandre onto the, um, onto the shore and into the caves. And as we said, she gives birth to the shadow creature, which then actually goes and kills Renly um, at his throne, so... Let's go have a look inside. They are servants of light, the children of fire. And the brighter the flame, the darker they are. This is honestly not what we expected at all. I don't think it's what we expected at all. Like nope. We knew it was going to be beautiful, but not this beautiful. Oh my God. And also, on Game of Thrones related, I think what makes this even more spectacular is you can see Scotland from here. He, you don't realize how close it actually is to, to Ireland. Scotland's very close. But have a look. All that landmass there, right in front of us, that's all Scotland. The Scottish Isles and stuff. But yeah, it's pretty cool that it's actually so close to here. Three. Yeah. So we're back in the car and we're on to location number three of today. On to the next one. On to the next one. Sha la la. Hey, hey. La la la. Hey, hey. La la la. Hey, hey. La la la. Hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Hi, uh, can we get past? Thanks. Bye. <laughs> so we just arrived at our next location and it's slashing rain. Yay! Brilliant. I was clever and I brought a raincoat. But I was not. So we're gonna get out and quickly have a look so we don't get too soaked. Yeah. Whew. It's wet out there. Just a bit. So this location was used as the Stormland, um, which was between the Baratheon brothers.
Lady Stark had not thought to find you in the Stormlands. I had not thought to be here, Lord Stannis. But I, I kind of wish it's so foggy and it's kind of so hard to see. But you, like you can kind of make out the cliffs and stuff. And oh my God, it's unbelievable. Right, thank you. It would be a lovely area. Like there's walkways and stuff, so it would be a lovely area on a good day to kind of walk around and see it more. It looked like a good day until we left the caves and then it went. And then the rain just came. So yeah, that was fun. But um. Yeah, so yeah, it was used, like I said, it was used as a storm lens. Oh, to the next. So let's just hope while we're driving to our next location that the rain stops. Yeah, that'd be nice. Because the next one is a good one. A very good one. There he is. How are you? How are you? How are we getting on? Hello. Lovely weather we're having in here. <laughs> so we're here at Balladotoy Harbour. Um, it's another location for one of the Game of Thrones filming locations. And also gets good Can you guess where it is? Have a look. If you guessed Dragonstone, you were right. It was used in the three um, prominent episodes and the beach behind us as well. It was where Theon Greyjoy first came back to the Iron Ireland. And then it was used when Melisandre burnt all of the um, non-believers. Basically, the non-believers, yeah, who were with uh, Davos. They worship the Seven rather than the, the one true God, the Fire God. Mm -hmm. A God of Light, sorry. It was God, God of Light, wasn't it? God of Light, yeah. We offer you these false gods. Take them and cast your light upon us. For the night is dark and full of terrors. Really all of the surrounding beaches became synonymous then with the Iron Islands. Yeah, they use, obviously they use like clips from the surrounding beaches as, as the, like, the panning shots and stuff. So yeah, it's really beautiful though, isn't it? Oh. Just the, 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 the rock formations and stuff here are just absolutely stunning. Also, we found a cave. Let's go look at the cave. Let's go look at the cave. So this beach behind us at Ballinatoy Harbour, this is the one we were talking about before. It's where, in the episode where Euron Greyjoy comes back to the Iron Islands, even though he was presumed dead. And it was also where they filmed him being uh, baptised as the King of the Islands and Yara and Theon, they Take believe. The and belts. Yeah. So this was all filmed here behind us. Iron Islands. So that was our last location for today, but tomorrow we have one more location to go to in Antrim and we're getting up super, super early to go. It's worth it. It's probably the one I'm most excited about in this whole trip. Me too. So yeah, we we'll have to wait and see. Good morning. We got up super, super early to go to the last destination on our Game of Thrones. Francho. I'm so tired. Please not impressed in the slightest out of that up. You tired, Bob? Hmm? You tired? Shocker. We just arrived and I'm super excited. You look good. Out of all of them, this is the one I've been most looking forward to. This is the most popular as well. Big time. Let's go. I agree with that. Tip top. I'm a bit underwhelmed. I, 
I think just the pictures ruin it for me because their pictures are always so perfect and it makes it look so mysterious, so ominous and it's just, it is really, really cool, but I was expecting more. Fair. They do recommend that you come visit it at like dawn or dusk because that's the best time for light and it makes it look... Ominous. Yeah, it makes it look ominous and it makes it look so much better. Just the shape of the trees and all are pretty cool. Oh, the shape, it, I'm the way it impressed. comes in, it, it's class, yeah. but... I was I just was expecting more. Yeah. The guy in the in the B and B did say he was like it literally is just loads of trees that fall over each other. And it is, but it's from a TV program, so you know. Not tree. No. You sure? Yeah. You're a dog. <laughs> so everything we read about the dark hedges told us come early in the morning or late in the evening because it's an absolute tourist trap during, during the day so you're not going to get that photo that you want but nobody in the scene because there's just going to be loads of tourists I'm here for the same reason so that's why we got up at uh, seven o'clock this morning we left at seven o'clock this morning you're not wrong actually <laughs> I, got, I woke up at quarter past six to sign the late, right? We need to settle out at quarter past six. Half I told him we didn't even for quarter past six. quarter to seven to leave for seven. And I woke up at quarter past seven. Yeah, my, I woke up at quarter past six and my. I even slept for the other alarms. Yeah, you did. And he kept saying, I'll get up in a minute. I'll get up in a minute. I did get up in a minute though. Like 20 minutes later. Still got up, didn't I? So yeah, we would highly recommend if you are coming and you do want that perfect shot, come early in the morning or late at night. Yeah. Yeah, back to the car now. We did think that this was our last Game of Thrones location here in Antrim. We lied. But we were told by our taxi driver last night that there's one more place at the east, so we're gonna go there on our way And it's, it's not small either, it's pretty big. It's huge. So uh, yeah, we'll go there, let's go. So we've made one little last quick stop here in Antrim for the Game of Thrones locations and we're at Dunluce Castle. Do you want to tell them what it was for? Dunluce Castle was used as the scene of Castle Pike, the House of Greyjoy, in a lot of your scenes actually. And it's absolutely stunning, like it's still properly standing. I know, it's a small It's tired, huge. You can pay in. We're not. We're not going to. We're just going to stand here. We're going to have a quick look before we get on on our journey. Have a look. So that's it for our Game of Thrones locations here in County Antrim. Pretty impressive. I liked a lot of them. Yeah. I think Dark Hedges was probably my top. Although the castle was pretty cool too. If we hadn't gone into the castle, I'd say that would have been absolutely yeah. up there. Yeah, again, I know we're kind of rushing through them because we only have a short time on our road trip, but if you have a lot of time, they're, de they're definitely they worth kind of spending time and, you know, and the weather wasn't wasn't good for the ones yesterday either. But yeah, so we're off to County Derry now to find a few more. As always, like, subscribe, Please. and ding a ling 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 a 